One of the first in-flight skills you will learn is how to control your airplane by using outside visual information. This program introduces the reference points you will use and explains how to combine them with your flight instruments to maintain straight and level flight. As the name implies, straight and level means flying a constant heading at a specific altitude. Airplane control in this situation is divided into two basic elements, pitch control and bank control. Your primary reference for determining pitch information is the view forward through the windshield. This is the normal pitch attitude for level flight. The distance between the nose and the horizon is a measurement of your pitch attitude. As your pitch attitude is increased, the distance between the nose and the horizon becomes smaller. As your pitch attitude is decreased, the horizon moves higher and further away from the nose. Using a point on the windshield that is on or near the horizon is also a good reference for your pitch attitude. Your pitch attitude can also be seen when you look at the wingtips. By comparing the angle of the wing to the horizon, your flight attitude is readily apparent. This is how a nose high pitch attitude looks. And this is a nose low pitch attitude. You can also verify the pitch attitude by referencing the flight instruments. The attitude indicator is an instrument that graphically shows your relationship to the horizon. This bar represents the horizon, and this symbol represents your airplane as viewed from behind. When you are in a level flight attitude, the airplane should rest on the horizon bar. When you increase the pitch attitude, the airplane symbol in the attitude indicator moves above the horizon. In a nose low attitude, the airplane symbol moves downward duplicating the attitude you see outside. Two other flight instruments you use to cross-check your visual references are the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator, or VSI. The altimeter shows your flying altitude and verifies that you are flying level. Any deviation in your altitude is indicated by movement in the needles. The VSI tells you if you are level, climbing, or descending. It also shows how fast you are climbing or descending. When the needle is at zero, the airplane is in level flight. Now that you have seen how to maintain level flight, let's look at how to keep the airplane flying in a straight line. To maintain straight flight, you must control the bank attitude of your airplane. One way to tell if you are flying straight is to note the position of the horizon in the windshield. You can detect a deviation from straight flight by noting when the horizon tilts in the windshield. In addition, both wingtips should appear to be an equal distance from the horizon. When the wingtips are equal, you are flying straight. As with pitch attitude, you can cross-check your visual cues with the attitude indicator. A turn is shown when the horizon bar tilts in reference to the miniature airplane. When the airplane and the horizon bar are aligned, the airplane is in straight flight. You can also determine if you are flying straight by looking at the heading indicator. A change in heading tells you are banked. Another instrument that detects a bank is the turn coordinator. Unlike the attitude indicator, the turn coordinator does not tell you the angle of bank, but rather tells you how quickly you are turning and the direction of the turn. Your ability to maintain straight and level flight by outside visual references will soon become second nature. This skill will help lay the foundation for almost all of the maneuvers you will learn. The same reference points you use to help maintain straight and level flight will be used to help you establish climbs, descents, and turns. Let's begin with a look at how to perform climbs. As with straight and level flight, the best visual reference for pitch information is the position of the nose relative to the horizon. To start a climb, smoothly apply back elevator pressure to raise the nose. As the pitch attitude increases, you will experience a decrease in airspeed. 
For this reason, add power as you increase the pitch to establish the climb. When you have set the proper pitch and power, the airspeed will stabilize at the correct climb speed. Any deviation in pitch will cause a change in airspeed. Decreasing the pitch attitude increases the airspeed, while raising the pitch attitude causes a decrease in airspeed. The flight instruments confirm the climb by a nose-high position on the attitude indicator, an increasing altimeter, and a positive rate of climb on the vertical speed indicator. Another visual indicator of a climb is the positive angle created by the wingtip and horizon. In a climb, you need right rudder pressure to overcome the aerodynamic forces that tend to make the airplane turn to the left. If you do not maintain enough rudder pressure, the ball in the inclinometer will move to the right. You can correct this by applying right rudder to bring the aircraft back into coordinated flight. To return to straight and level flight, you need to anticipate the level off before you reach the desired altitude. One method is to lead your desired altitude by 10% of your rate of climb. Here, your rate of climb is 500 feet per minute. 10% of 500 is 50. Based on that rate of climb, you should begin your level off 50 feet before you reach your desired altitude. The references you used for a climb are the same references you will use to establish a descent. Descents are practiced to help you learn how to lose altitude without gaining excessive airspeed. Two types of descents are practiced, those at approach airspeed and those at cruise. To transition from cruise to a descent at approach speed, you must first lose airspeed. To do this, reduce the power and maintain altitude by increasing back elevator pressure. This helps reduce the airspeed to the proper approach speed. When you reach the correct airspeed, lower the nose slightly to maintain that speed. The pitch attitude in this type of descent will be almost level or slightly nose down. Any change in the pitch attitude will cause a corresponding change in your airspeed. To descend at cruise airspeed, lower the nose at the same time you reduce power. As with the previous descent, maintain airspeed by adjusting the pitch attitude. Use the VSI again to calculate when to begin your level off from a descent. Use the same 10% rule described earlier to identify the level off point. You begin a turn by rotating the control wheel in the direction you want to turn. Once you have initiated the bank, it will continue to become steeper until you neutralize the control wheel. Holding neutral control wheel pressure keeps the aircraft in a constant bank angle. When you want to roll out of the turn, use opposite control wheel pressure. Due to the aerodynamic force of adverse yaw, you must use rudder pressure in the direction of the turn to keep the aircraft in coordinated flight. The position of the horizon in the windshield is the best outside reference for the turn. By keeping this reference stationary in the windshield, you will be able to hold the aircraft in a constant bank attitude. A turn to the left looks like this from your viewpoint. Notice how the horizon is positioned in the windshield. A right turn will appear different from a turn to the left. One of the most notable differences is that with the same bank angle, the nose will appear to be higher in a left turn than in a right turn. Another factor that influences the position of the horizon in the windshield is the amount of bank. As it increases, you lose more vertical lift. To compensate, you must increase the pitch attitude to maintain level flight. In addition to your visual references, the airplane's flight instruments can also verify that you are in a turn. The attitude indicator, heading indicator, and turn coordinator will also verify that you are in a turn. When you are rolling out of a left turn to a specific heading, you should lead your rollout by about half your bank angle. 
In other words, if you are in a 30 degree bank and you want to roll out on the heading of 090, you should begin your rollout at 105 degrees or 15 degrees before the desired heading. Now that you've seen how climbs, descents, and turns are performed, let's combine them into a single maneuver. The climbing turn is simply a combination of a turn and a climb. The easiest way to combine these two maneuvers is to start with the climb. First, establish the proper pitch attitude and power setting for climb. Then roll into your desired bank. As you become more proficient, this combination will become more natural and you will be able to do both steps simultaneously. When returning to level flight, you should level off when you reach your altitude and return to wings level flight at your desired heading. To perform a descending turn, first establish your pitch attitude and power, and then roll into your desired angle of bank. As you reach your target altitude, level off, then roll back to a wings level attitude on your desired heading. When you combine the fundamental maneuvers of climbs, descents, and turns, you have the ingredients to perform most flight maneuvers.